fitness pro mentors world. Welcome to the Minds on Muscle show. I am Brandon and I'm here with my wonderful co-host and mentor, Glenn. And today we're going to help you talk about how to two, three X your personal training business because at fitness pro mentors, we want you to have the life you want, have the clients you want. And at the end of the day, have some time to relax because you deserve to make over $100,000 a year and have the time with your family, your life, buy your Corvette, whatever that is. But today... I want to talk about something that's kind of near and dear to my heart. That's something that's kind of both a pet peeve and I think a very interesting conversation to have. And it is that you should not become a teacher in most cases, but you should teach. Glenn, how you doing, man? I'm great. Today's been lovely so far. I'm really excited about this conversation. I think this, this has been creeping up more and more recently. Uh, with some more of our students talking about uh, avenues for income generation, income streams, and teaching seems to be one of those things because you can't help but think that, oh, the person in the front of the room must be making bank because they're the teacher. And if they're teaching and I'm listening and I'm making X amount, they must be making at least two or three times that. And you and I both know that's not always the case. And we'll talk about that a little bit more today. Yeah, I have a, you know, a kind of like a more personal story with this because, and I think that a lot of us go through this very similar thing. It's that uh, when I first got into this advanced world of RTS and all this fun stuff that helped me propel my career and Glenn's career to where we are today, um, there was this instructor that I was introduced to named Peter Chason that I've spoken about many times, the late Peter, and he was the instructor for the RTS 123 program as well as the MAT Jumpstart program at that time. And Peter had his own business, an amazing client roster who's charging like $175 an hour in Toronto. And he was teaching and being flown all over the world to Florida at Mark Magnus facility and all these other high level, amazing athletes facility. And he was teaching and it's easy to look at that and go, I want that. Mm. That's where I want to be. Did you ever go through that? Uh, here and there, but I mean, I'm not one for international travel, but the idea of like being the guy yeah. feels good. It's and nice. I, and I think that, there accidentally becomes, and I had this, admittedly, this black belt, you know, martial arts thing where you go, okay, I'm a personal trainer. Once I become a great personal trainer, whatever that means, I need to open my own place. And once I open my own place, I need to become a teacher for the thing that I'm doing. And once I have my own place and I'm teaching, I will have arrived. And I don't know if everyone feels that way. But I personally felt that way. I looked at Peter and I looked at where he was at and all these other instructors. And I was like, they all have their own place. They're all teaching internationally. Uh, they must be making bank. They are the person. And so for me to make the most amount with my clients and have the most successful business, I have to be the dude. I have to be that person. I have to try and become the instructor. And I mean, I mean, I'm happy to speak on this, but you said like, you know, the idea of being the dude. What, what about that for you kind of got you fired up? You're like, I need, I'm going to be the dude. Well, I think for most of us, it's kind of like a bit of a, I won't say like an ego trip, but if you're the person in the front of the room, I think it signifies that you must have been doing something right to get here, right? And I know for myself personally, I think a lot of people go through this, it's just that, that fear of failure, that fear of not being enough, of being like worthless. I think a lot of people struggle just having money conversations with clients because they don't feel like um, they've got the self-confidence, but perhaps if I'm can say I'm a teacher and I can communicate that and I can show my accolade of I stand in front of a room and teach people like you and other trainers uh, how to do their thing, well, that must mean that I'm worth it. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that because I, I had a gig doing that. I was employed by an insurance company and as part of their services in this HR insurance company, they would uh, send speakers to do like health and wellness talks to people but what is health and what is wellness? And this was like four or five years ago, I was doing this and they gave me a nice chunk of change to, to be doing it. Um, but I can tell you, I the way I was looking at health and fitness five or six years ago, isn't at all the way that I look at health and fitness now. Um, I had a much more narrow idea of what that meant and they wanted me to even teach uh, their materials. They said, hey, here's the presentation we want you to do, put your own spin on it. And I was even reading and looking at it and being like, I don't know if A, this is wholly accurate, uh, and B, if this is what I should really be telling people. So, I mean, I went through that whole gamut myself 
And, uh, and it didn't mean that I, I knew exactly what I was talking about. And those conversations about like money with clients weren't any easier because I was the guy at the front of the room. So, I mean, yeah, I think part of it is just like a, a safety ego net kind of thing more than anything else for a lot of people, other people, I'm sure they have bigger aspirations, but for me, that's what it was at least. Yeah, no. So I getting into this, this whole thing, like my very quick story on this, and I couldn't agree more was I was a trainer. I was the head trainer at a place called Persicini Fitness, and they called me the trainer of the trainers, which is actually trademarked by a few different people uh, in different ways, so definitely uh, not trademarking that. But they called me that to the snap because I was always doing study groups and education, and I saw Peter teaching the RTS program, and it was like the hardest program, the most complicated personal training program I ever took, so I thought if I was good enough of a certif certified person in that world that I became a teacher for that, that would help me make a bunch of money as a teacher. That also helped me get really busy with my clients because then if I have arrived into the, into the instructor role, that will also mean that clients will see me as the instructor and will wanna come see me. And once I'm at that level and I have that kind of money coming in both from a client and working with trainer's perspective, it'll be very easy and logical to open my own place. So I had this tragic opportunity happen where Peter passed away, unfortunately really broke my heart and many people's hearts in Toronto and across the world. But because Peter had such a foothold in the RTS education community, Tom Purvis asked myself and two other people, one of which was last week guest Dave Friday, to step into the role to become instructors in area. And we divided the GTA up into three different sections. And I was honored to be asked because he asked me to do it when I was 23 years old. So I was quite young. But to me at that time, I'd been pushing so hard that being asked to become an educator, I was like, I've arrived. I've made it. The next level is here. This also means I'm going to make more money. So I put all my time and all my eggs into the basket of sleeping in my parents' basement, not having my own place, not having my own business, not even having a full client roster. And I 100% focused on becoming the best educator I possibly could for that program. And I taught my first program and I made some okay income, but I didn't feel like I'd arrived. I just felt like I was doing something different in the same world. It was still exercise, but I wasn't training people. In this narrative, I, I was right. <laughs> I had arrived, but that arrival wasn't what I thought. And what ended up happening, and this is what kind of one of the tragic things that I think a lot of people see the graduation process from being a certified personal trainer to becoming a teacher as a necessary step to reach the next level. Well, I'll tell you, I did that. And I know a lot of other people who have done that and it doesn't necessarily turn into what you think it turns into. I don't know. Glenn, what do you think about that? I don't think, um, I think the great arrival, like, oh, I arrived here and now I'm going to be happy or now I'm gonna have X, Y, Z is probably one of the biggest myths of the entrepreneur, the business person or the, the, the contractor or whatever you wanna call it, however you see yourself. Because at the end of the day, like, how long does that like happiness, that moment really, really last? Like, I'm willing to bet it was kind of like from the moment that that you know Tom bestowed you with the title, you're really excited that day, maybe a day or two afterwards, but then things kind of go back to normal afterwards, right? I mean, that's that's the thing with arriving anywhere is it's not really the the arriving that is like the exciting part. It's the journey and the skills um, that you amass when you're on the way up there, right? And I we talked about this a, a little while back, was, uh, which is, you know, it's really great to celebrate your wins, but you've got to be able to celebrate your wins and then also stay hungry at the same time, right? And just because you arrive somewhere doesn't mean the work is done or there isn't anything else to do. I mean, life is just one big continual process of growth and moving, just like movement in, in and of itself, right? I mean, right now our nerves are sending inputs from all of our body to our brain. Our brain is orchestrating the next step uh, in the movement process and now it's sending that information and the new blueprint, all the muscles in the body to contract in certain ways at certain times and velocities so that we create movement. And that's an ongoing process. It doesn't stop for your entire life. And that's what growth in your career is like as well. So when you arrive in a spot, it doesn't mean that you're done or that you're there. It just means that you, you're, you've you taken that step, but your body's already perpetually taking the next one. So Yeah, so I couldn't agree more. So like kind of skinny of it, I want everyone hearing that if you want to become an educator or an instructor, there's nothing wrong with that. But just recognize it doesn't mean that you're at necessarily the next level per se. You can view it that way if you like. But looking back on your business, your life, nothing will really change. It's just like if you're a martial artist and you have a yellow belt and you go to the next color belt, that's an incredible honor to be given that next level belt, so to speak. But at the same time, that next level belt is just showcasing that you're still on the staircase. You're still moving forward. You're still going the right direction. 
the most important thing that I think around this entire thing that I want to showcase outside of my own IR stuff at that time, because I'm glad I had that revelation at such a young age, because that for me helped me have ownership over the material, which we're going to talk a lot more about later on. But it helped me realize that, oh my gosh, th be doing this educating thing is not going to lead to where I want. If you're going to become, want to, teach and instruct, have to recognize that is an entirely different business model than your personal training business model. And the reason why that's so significant is if you are not making enough money right now, if your own per, if you talk to any multimillionaire, billionaire person who has gigantic businesses and a portfolio of companies, they will tell you, do not divide your time and focus between more than one business at a time. There's someone that I heard, I thought was a great example. This gentleman had five different businesses. He had three fitness businesses, a dental business, and then a consulting company for laundromats. And he was making a ton of money, but at the same time, nothing was really growing because he was so dispersed amongst those three different businesses, but five different locations and time in a week. You only have so much time per week. And so if your personal training business, you wanna become a teacher, that's great, do it. But if your personal training business is not where you want it to be, you're not making the kind of money that you've aimed tor towards, you're not getting referrals consistently, you don't have a system to go out and get new clients when you want them. Frankly, you're not even sure where your next client's gonna come from. You should not focus on an entirely different business model. Because we talked about there are three different kind of emotional reasons why people make purchase decisions. It's a health reason, wealth reasons, and relationship. Your personal training business is in the health world. Maybe relationship, depending on some of them. Most cases, health. Personal trainers? They're looking to learn things from you to add to their wealth. And if you don't recognize that those are two totally different messages, two totally different business models, and you're sharing it all in one platform on a social media channel, a website, things get murky fast. I don't know. Does that sound bonkers, Glenn? Am I just ranting here? No, no, no. I mean, it, I mean, it comes back down to that the thing we're always telling people who are listening to this podcast, but and we're always, I mean, I think I, I mention it pretty much every week to somebody is that one product, uh, one message for like one kind of person. And that is what we're trying to sell people. Because if you're for everyone, you're for no one. And I mean, you, we talked about this from my own personal social medias at one point. I was using the same account to do stuff for fitness pro mentors, like so talking to personal trainers to help them build their wealth. But then I was using the same account to try to talk to my um, personal training clients or like prospective personal training clients. And that's two totally different kinds of markets and I was getting no traction for either. Once I started separating things out and being like, okay, I'm using like this one for this and this one for this, things took a lot better of a hold and the, the marketing efforts went a lot better and we saw FPM and my personal growth and Strata's personal growth improve and increase. And so, yeah, no, I think you're, you're absolutely right. You can't muddy your message by trying to talk to two different people on one, at one space in one place. So if that right now sounds ambiguous to you at all, you need to focus on just one part of your business. And in my opinion, your core business is your personal training business. It really is. How do you make sure that your clients are super consistent? I will tell you, admittedly, I am spending most of my time developing, growing, and automating Fitness Pro Mentors, and I'm planning to do that for at least the next two years because it takes about three years for something to become rock solid, stable, and consistent. I've been personal training for nearly 17 years, which is insane. As of 7 September, it'll be 17 years. And I will tell you, I personally, now for my own clients, I don't have to ask for referrals very often. I don't have to go out and search for clients very often. I have a consistent schedule that creates a consistent amount of income. And even when someone leaves, I usually have someone that comes in and fills it. And I also know, much like Glenn will and Taylor will and everyone else over time, as you grow and work with a list for client list for so long, it will take care of itself if you put the right energy in, in the right spots at the right time. And if you need somebody, you can do that. My personal one-on-one -on -one practice is fairly automated. Glenn's is getting there. Taylor's is getting there. It's all happening. And Strata also can take care of itself in many different ways. We have still things we're doing, especially when COVID lockdowns are gone. But it allows me, because my schedule is so consistent and robust, to focus on a new business model with the time I have in between for a specific purpose and have two different messages. And that's also taken 17 years <laughs> for that to happen. 17. Uh, so I don't know. I, I think it's really an, an important po discussion because at the end of the day, I think everyone here, you should consider how you can challenge yourself and grow. You should absolutely push yourself outside your comfort zone and consistently try to go to whatever you call the next communication level, the next business level, the next opportunity for you to grow. But don't forego growth today 
for the growth of looking tomorrow. Make sure that today you're focusing on everything you need to do to make sure you are rock solid. So when you go to the next step, you're prepared for it and ready for it. So if you want to become a teacher, make it rain, but make sure you make your first farm solid. I don't know. I'm getting a little fiery up here because I want everyone here to succeed. And I think that if people get a little too dispersed, it slows things down. That drives me nuts. No, no, I get it. And it's funny because I know, I know when you get passionate about something and you dive into it, th near the end you say, but, you know, Glenn, I don't know, Glenn, what do you think? But I know you do know because this is important stuff because, listen, at the end of the day, we just don't, and I don't want to belabor Brandon's point too much, but we, a lot of success is just doing the next right thing after the thing you're doing right now. That's how most people end up growing. They're not afraid to take, uh, they're not afraid to accept some level of risk. They're not afraid to fail. They do the thing, they learn, and they move forward. And what we're just trying to do right now is help you, right? You might be able to make a great income off of becoming a speaker or a teacher in the next three or four years. That might be great. But what if you really focus on having a great PT business right now for the first year or two and then double down on the teaching thing for the next year or two afterwards. I mean, then you'd have even more, you'd have even more income and then you wouldn't have that fear of like, where's my next meal coming from? Am I gonna be able to pay the rent? Because you already have that stable income coming because you had the business is stable. I won't go any further. I'm gonna start getting a ranty myself. I would like to, oh, sorry, bro. I got one more thing. On okay, you take I it. I got one more thing. And then we it. gotta talk about why you should yes, teach. Yes, thank you. But the last kind of component of this that I'll throw out there that was a, a hindrance for me that I wrote down in my notes and I'm going over now because I want to bring it up is that, so first up, we've got two different business models, the teaching education model, and then you have your personal training practice model. They have two different values, two different client avatars. They are two totally different businesses, even though it's the same ice cream stand, so to speak. You can sell hot dogs and ice cream in the same stand, but different people want different things at different times of the day. Um, the other side of it, and this was the other thing that was a big challenge for me, and I see this a lot with friends of mine, is that if you, if your business isn't where you want it to be, and you're super excited about the company that you're working for or your own education company, and you put all your promotion into, look, I'm a teacher for this. I do this kind of education. That's fantastic. And it's great that you give so much back to the t places and the certificates that have helped you grow. But it comes back to, for me, I would have opened, I would have been able to open Strata sooner if I wasn't putting 100% of my effort into marketing biomechanics from 24 to 26 years old. It was when I was 26 and I realized that I wasn't getting anywhere on either one of the businesses because there was only so many people to reach in my town on the biomechanics education and I was also not reaching my audience. When I was 26 and I buckled down for that one year, it's when I saved all the money to open this place. I'll say this. You are an absolute incredible uh, trainer, you're an incredible communicator, and you're an incredible educator, which we're going to talk about now in a second. If you want to teach, do it. But please, whoever's listening to this, my last thing I'll say is just make sure you have your foundation set. Because making a full career out of being an educator in this industry is really, really, really tough. And I think you need to be super solid in the bottom to make sure you can move on to the next part. So anyway, here's the thing, though. Communication is great, and all of us should consider teaching. Glenn, why should we consider teaching? Oh, Brandon knows I love this. <laughs> I love this one so much. I think teaching might be the best way to amalgamate information and knowledge in your brain. If you can take a complex topic like hormesis or uh, what, what creates range of motion, whatever that is. If you can take a complicated topic and you can distill it down and communicate it to a 15 year old or a 75 year old, you clearly have the understanding at a deep level of what that thing is. And the ability to take your knowledge and see all the different uses of it, creativity, that's the source of a lot of value that your clients have. If you're someone that has a lot of information, which is different than knowledge, by the way, if you're someone that has a lot of information, but you don't know how to amalgamate it uh, in such a way that your clients can benefit from it the most, your sessions aren't gonna be as great with clients. You're not gonna get them to where they want to go as fast as they can. At the end of the day, that's gonna hurt your value. It's gonna, help, it's gonna hurt how much you can charge people. However, if you understand that information so well that it becomes knowledge, you can see how all of it 
weaves together in some kind of huge immaculate flow chart and pick out whatever you need at a moment's notice to help your client get them exactly what they need that day, solve their problems quicker and faster, they're going to sing your praises, your value goes up, and you can help these people tremendously. And so for me, being able to teach that information really shows solidarity in your knowledge. Now, I can go on further and talk about why it's amazing, Brandon, but I'm going to toss the buck to you because I'm sure you've got something to say about why you think teaching is such a great tool and why everyone should be strived to be doing more teaching in their lives. Well, I think it really shows holes in your system. I mean, mm -hmm. you're 100% correct that it helps to give you, I think you said solidarity with the information. Like it really builds a sturdy foundation. One of the most power, I, I just was interviewed for on a podcast yesterday, which I'm excited to share when that happens. And I had somebody ask, hey, when you're recording videos and you're doing social media content, how many takes does it for it to take for you, me, to record something? And in most cases, I can do something in one or two takes if I'm saying something with a bunch of word salad, it takes me a few more times to have it come out nice and smooth, smashing a bunch of word together. But at the end of the day, I can do it now in one or two takes. But I wanted to clarify to that individual when he asked this question that it wasn't so much that I can do it in one or two takes because I'm so great. It's because I've practiced it so many times. This person was a natural bodybuilder who was interviewing me and I said, how many times do you bicep curl? And he goes, ah. I said, right, even if you're just starting working out in one month and you do four sets of 12 on Monday, that's 48, 96, what is that, 182, is that wrong? A, a bunch of reps by the end of the month. You've done a ton of reps at the end of the month, nearly 200 reps of bicep curls, and you get to the point where you're not even thinking about how you're performing the elbow flexion. And even if you are, you can do parts of that elbow flexion so much more automated and so much more easier. When was the last time you used your mouth and said the same thing 200 times in a month? Most of us don't. Most of us don't practice saying the same things, which is where the ums and the ahs and the hums and the pug all come out because you have to practice saying it. Our job, be it teaching, be it personal training, whatever it is, you got to open your mouth and you got to practice saying things in a concise way, not expansive, using the words that the clients care about. And if you say it in a smooth, organized way, it's really amazing. You can really do some incredible things. Personally, when I first opened this gym, because I'd done so much talking in the first few months, I had one of my clients who owned a construction sales company selling glass and whatnot, offer me a job selling, making two times what I was planning on paying myself at the end of the year when I could afford to right off the bat, only because I could communicate. You want one thing that's a little like sidebar? You want to do one thing to make your career amazing? Pick skills that you're not good at and get skilled at them. Sales, talking, leads, skills will pay forward and move forward for you all the time. Glenn is a perfect example of someone that has consistently worked on becoming a better communicator. And from when we first started, he was confident in front of a camera and is consistently going live, doing videos, says things more concisely, does less moving when he talks, use eyes contact, all this stuff. He's consistently evolving his communication skills from when I, when we first started working together, really two and a half ish years ago. Yeah. And you'll notice next year, both of us will be better than we are today because we are doing the reps. We record a podcast, we do live. Each one of us are speaking close to 10 hours live each month on top of what you're doing with your clients. So take anything in your world, drums, guitar, making a sandwich, physics, I don't care what it is, practice communicating what you do to people of all different levels. Because if you can't explain it to my 89 year old grandfather who has the attention span of a gnat, love him to death, versus my two and a half, well, my two and a half year old son, call it my five year old son in a few years, you should be able to explain some of these concepts to each one of them and have them get the Coles notes of it. I, I think it's one of the most, I think it is the most powerful tool. Ultimately, it is personal training. I'm hoping you know the, this person's name. Do you, do you know who the guy that writes? Oh, I've got it now. Do you know, you've heard of the Dilbert comics? Right? Dilbert, yes. There's a TV show in the, the late, in the early 2000s. Um, Adam Scott is the, 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 the animator and the creator. He's got a really great book. Um, I forget what it's called. I'll have to figure it out and, and share it in the comment section afterwards. But he's got a great, uh, really great book about his career because he's had a whole bunch of different jobs and he's wildly successful now in a lot of different ways most people wouldn't even know. And he has a section of his book um, and he talks about skill stacking. And he says that the more soft skills that you have that you can stack on top of each other, the exponential more value that you have. 
And you don't necessarily have to be a huge master in all these, like have your black belt, so to speak. But if you're proficient in a whole bunch of different um, soft skills, your value and what you can do in the world and the amount of different jobs and things you can create for yourself goes up. Right. And this is one of the things that we talk about in this program all the time is like what soft skills are necessary to become an amazing personal trainer. And we talk about things like planning and scheduling. Um, we talk about things like communication, even sales. Like these are all soft skills that are really, really important. Unlike your task technical knowledge, like personal training, like moment arms, range of motion, whatever, manual muscle tests, whatever you want to call it, hypertrophy, fat loss, whatever you want to call it, that information, that knowledge is very specific to one thing that you're doing. However, if you get really great at sales and you get really great at communication, you get really great at, at planning and scheduling yourself, honestly, there's very few jobs that you won't learn to excel at because you can plan your growth. You can explain to people your value and why they should see value in this and help get them more on board with it. Your communication in terms of winning people over to your side or having them see things um, from your point of view and connect with them deeply. All these things go really, really far. If you want to know why Brandon and I and Taylor and the Strata staff are so successful, is we actually spend a lot of a time making sure that we hone these skills. When I was trying to get better at communicating and delivering our education-based clothes here at Strata, where we take people through the information um, that we learned about them and we put it into um, like a presentation for them, so to speak, I spent a month every 15-minute drive to Strata, every 15-minute drive home, practicing speaking one, uh, on one concept. I would practice speaking about you know, uneven wear on the joints and how it causes osteoporosis, and I have analogies for that. Then I would do one on the importance of symmetry, and I got really, really great at delivering all that stuff so that when I went into my education-based clothes, I could share that information with people. They would see the value. And getting that value communicated to them so they become lifelong clients is huge. Most people lose clients over time because clients don't see their value. And they didn't set that relationship up, relationship up very well at the very beginning. And because I'm a, I'm a solid communicator now and I'm working on all my other skills, I've exponentially been able to grow my business. I'm on track to have the busiest year of my life. I'm really super excited about it. So I love, I, mean, I want everyone to kind of like listen back to, because Glenn said, hey, he's working on, he's working on education-based closes, which is a storytelling approach. We love to try and help people. So our clients not only understand the components that are taught in traditional like report of findings with physical therapy and chiropractic places and, and taught through many different amazing programs, but how do we take the story of what it is and what it means to the individual and integrate that into the process. And so what did Glenn do? He was in his car practicing talking through specific things. So there's kind of two things there. First and foremost, there's this thing I, I learned from a drummer named Benny Greb, who is a superstar drummer. He called it hot dog in it. And it sounds so cheesy, but when you eat a hot dog, hot dog is a long thing, and you eat it one bite at a time. And it's got a beginning and an end. And you have to take one bite and you have to chew on it and embrace the hot dog, <laughs> chew it, and then eat it before you can take the next bite. And so this is one of the things I've recommended to Glenn and to anyone is this is an old RTS lecture book and there's a table of contents. And everything you've ever invested a dollar into that's given you an instruction manual traditionally has a syllabus, manuscript, or uh, table of contents. And what I love about table of contents is that this list right here, introduction to key principles, what is an exercise, biomechanics defined, risk versus benefit. I'm not going to read all of these because this is some dated old RTS stuff. But if you take each one of these line entries, you should be able to tell a small story about what is important about what is an exercise and biomechanics defined. And think of anything that you convey to a client, you should be able to talk about pain and the relationship between exercise and pain and the relationship between physics, exercise and weight loss or whatever it is. And if you have that thing, you should be able to break it down into each digestible bite. And this is what I love about teaching. What I love about teaching is that if you get really, really good at teaching, which I don't know that I am, but I'm comp I feel pretty good about my communication skills, and I know Glenn's pretty awesome, and many people are, is that if I had this table of contents in front of me and you gave me a couple hours, I would be able to tell one smooth, cohesive story from each one of these lines. Each line would be an individual story, a filing cabinet that I would open, that information I would share to help you understand what is an exercise. And then the next line, introduction to biomechanics or exercise mechanics. And I could open each one of those and tell one smooth, cohesive story now. But how it starts is one bite at a time. Starting with one line. Tell me a story about this. How do you feel about that, Glenn? Talk, talk, talk. Oh, I don't feel good about explaining that. Okay, one second. Let me write down some notes, research a little more. And we'll talk about this line entry again. Repeat this line. 
bicep curls, bicep curl, next line, tricep extension, tricep extension, and continue down practicing every single line until all of a sudden you have a cohesive workout program. You've already done this with your workouts. You've already learned a bunch of different exercises. And then when you study the biomechanics of things and you break down an exercise into now I can take this bicep curl and put the dumbbell over on the other side to create a bit of a torque at the radial ulnar joint so I can keep bicep curling. That's a small variation using the equation that you've learned through this different physics-based platforms. Incredible. You need to do this with your communication. Take a line, practice learning how to do the bicep curl words for biomechanics. And then get more free, uh, more creative. How do you explain it to a trainer who already knows what biomechanics is? How do you explain it to a trainer that has no idea what that is? How do you explain the idea of biomechanics to a child and to your client that they even care about? And so this is what I love about business sets and reps. You take one bite at a time, digest it, and make it rain the information. And if you keep doing it over and over and over again, it'll work. I had one of our students, last thing, I'm ranting, I'm sorry, but I had one of our students ask me about how I study each, how much do I study each week? And I will tell you, hands down, I do not sit down in front of my computer and sit down in front of a book right now and go, this is study time. I don't do that very much anymore. But what I do is go, I have a destination of, I want to make this money at the end of the year, which means this many clients per month. I need to have this many conversations based off of my close ratio and da, 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 da. So what skills do I need to learn now to have an outreach conversation and work on direct messaging? What kind of communication stuff do I need to have down in text message land, so to speak, to start a conversation? What kind of lead gens do I need to be working on? What kind of things do I need to be working on today? And so I will learn about that. I'll go on YouTube. I will learn, watch Charles Munger and all these other people who are incredible communicators and have my own mentor that helps me with specific things so that way I can move forward and make it happen. And I do that every free hour, every hour I'm sitting in this office without a client, if I'm not writing checks for the business or something like that, I am studying and applying and learning new things. So it's hours each week. And that's where I'm teaching, I'm learning, I'm practicing, and I'm exposing people to what I do. And I absolutely love it. Anyway, that was a rant. Personally, I hope Brandon keeps writing checks. Um, Me too. There's a huge benefit here. And uh, I can't state this enough. You know, I, I think client retention for a lot of people is a big problem because especially if you're in like big box gym world, what, you know, what's, what's the, what's the, the kind of avenue for sales process, have someone come in, do a consult assessment, you know, hopefully that goes well, they buy a package. What happens when it's package renewal time, right? It's kind of like fingers crossed, hope that they buy another one. How are you continually delivering value to people? right? Everyone's value preposition or proposition is going to be a little bit different in terms of what they're receiving. They have goals. They want to get to those goals. And as long as they feel like they're getting to those goals, they're going to be better off. Well, how do we do that? Well, one way is you track what you're doing. You reassess. You can objectively show people they're improving, which is great. The other thing, it's like Brandon showed there, is every time you're about to do an exercise, educate them on something. Communicate why this is a value to them and why you're doing it. That's going to A, justify your process. They're going to respect you more as a professional, but B, they get to learn more. And every time they get to learn more from you and they see you as more of an expert, your value goes up in their books. So when it gets time for renewal or it gets time to increase your prices, because inflation's a thing right now, it's going up, people are going to have to increase their prices soon. Are you confident that you've done enough educating and you've been delivering enough value such that your $5 bump is justified? Because right now I can tell you, unless you're tracking really, really well and doing reassessments, you can show people this stuff, right? That either their phallus is going down, they've got more muscle, or they're getting stronger, or their, you know, their unwanted sensations are changing. Unless you've done all that, and then B, you've also educated them because you've got strong communication skills, you're probably going to lose some people if that's the case. However, if you're showing people how they've been improving, you can, you've been tracking that, and you've been consistently educating them in such a way where they feel smarter and more intelligent every time they see you, you shouldn't have any problem raising your rates. It should be a no-brainer. Yeah. Listen, I want to kind of like close out my side of things here with saying that becoming a teacher, there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, I am a teacher. Glenn is a teacher. Taylor is a teacher, a leader, if you will. We try to lead by example and consistently showcase and try and help people so that way we're not just in a standing on a podium. There's nothing wrong with that. But I would encourage you to make sure your foundation is solid because if you're trapped in your business and your business is not working somewhat autonomously for you at a certain point or you're at least working towards that because that can take several years for you to get things to that point, 
moving on and going, I'm going to teach for this company. I'm going to start a teaching wing of my company. It won't be successful. It will be a hurdle. It'll be a struggle and it will be stressful. However, the season of teaching for me when I was 24, I was young enough that I learned a lot of new soft skills that I believe translated to my success today and allowed me to teach stuff for a drum magazine internationally recognized and to fly to Anaheim, do that stuff and then do this. I believe it gave me opportunities, but at the same time, the thing that, I mean, I'm grateful. I wouldn't change anything now, but did it slow down my progress in specific areas? And it very well may have teaching and hot dog in it and taking bites of one piece at a time and practicing communicating everything in your world, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful things because you'll find out two things a few things. One, you will gain mastery over that information and be able to say it concisely, smoothly and automate it. So it comes out rolling like you can do a podcast like this. Second, you'll learn what you don't know, which if that makes you feel not good, I'm sorry, we can talk about that in another episode. But I love that because it gives you an opportunity to move forward and make something incredible happen. And in my opinion, that's my favorite thing. Failing forward, as I learned from Brad Thorpe, who shared this from somebody else, Figure out what you're not good at, and you can grow from there, and you can keep making it rain. It's interesting on that failure note. You know, I work with someone who's like a business mentor of mine, but also helps me with like my mental fitness. And one day we were talking about people who are successful, and he said, uh, Glenn, you know, I have clients who make millions and millions of dollars a year, and uh, you know what they all tell me is the secret of their success? I said, what? I'm very, very curious, because who doesn't want to know the secret to success? And he said they're all willing to fail, and they love failure. He said they all look forward to failing because when they fail, they know they're going to learn something and grow. So have fun failing communication. It's really okay. Like that's how you're going to learn. And I embrace it, right? Lean into the suck. Don't take it personally. Listen, if you go live and do some sort of video and you stammer and you make a mistake, hey, we do it all the time. And it's a part of it. As long as you don't recognize, you go, oh, I made a mistake there. I wouldn't worry about that because no one knows you made a mistake until you announce it, just like jazz music. So I think this is pretty cool. I love this. Don't necessarily become a teacher until you're 100% ready. Practice teaching all the time and have fun. But at this point, Glenn, will you teach me what your pick of the week is? I knew it. I knew it. I was thinking about this one this morning, uh, long and hard. And the pick of the week I'm going to be presenting and sharing with you today is going to be meditation. Meditation is my pick of the week. I don't know if anyone here caught Dave for Day's interview with Brandon last Thursday. Dave for Day was a very early mentor of mine, and I've seen him to treat my body in the past. He's a man I look up to, incredibly disciplined. And he was talking about meditation being like the big thing he wanted to share with people. I just want to echo and mirror his sentiments. There was a time where I was meditating every day for 30 minutes, for probably three or four straight months. And I can tell you, in that time, something palpable changed inside of me. I became more patient and more calm and more um, insightful for myself. And that's never really gone away, even when I stopped meditating. Meditation allows you to do a couple, uh, not even a couple, a lot of amazing things. But the two things I really want to focus on is one, it helps you bring a tremendous focus to your life during your day. If you get up in the morning and just meditate for 20 minutes, even if you've never done it before, you just close your eyes and you, you just whatever, get stuck in it or you focus on your breath or you lose yourself in it for 20 minutes, you will be amazed at how well your uh, awareness and your ability to do things like communicate improves during uh, the day. Um, and the second thing is, and this is huge for me, is when you meditate, something shifts inside you where you have less fear. You have less concern, less worry. And this is really where the biggest impact for me and I think probably for you on your business is going to come from. When you have less fear, and you're more free, you can see opportunities that were never there before. You can fail and look forward to it. All these different things that would hold you back are no longer there. And it's not like an overnight thing, but I guarantee you, if you set it a habit that you're gonna meditate every morning for 30 minutes, and you did that for a straight month, you didn't miss a day, regardless of how hard that is, you would be a totally different person at the end of that one month. So Brandon, my pick of the week is, is meditation. Love it. I think that's a good one. I have never done a lot of meditation, but when I do do it, it's been a very powerful and surreal experience that gives me a better framing. So I love it. I think everyone should do that. Try meditating. Thank you. What about you, Brandon? I would love to hear what pick of the week you got cooked up this week. Uh, so I want to challenge everyone to make more money. 
I want you to make more money by keeping more money. And the best way to do that, like Glenn said, is through retention. And so my pick of the week is a communication exercise, which is a reverse engineering communication exercise. I want you to look at your diary and look at your schedule, and I want you to find one client that is kind of on the edge, someone that you feel less connected with, that your goals are less going the direction that you guys want, and take a brief second and reverse engineer where that client is and the goals they talked to you about when they first started the relationship with you a month ago, years ago, many years ago. And I want you to think about from the previous conversations you've had and every individual conversation you've had today, what is it that they are seeing you for today? Why do they keep showing up besides the routine? And if you know that, that they are seeing you because they're feeling older and they're slowing down, they're feeling achy and they're unhappy with how their body is and they're frustrated every time they show up, I want you to try and pick some key talking points for the next reassessment to talk about, be it aging and exercise and the benefits of understanding the Goldilocks zone and how great they are doing if you talk about senescence or whatever it may be. And if you know that those talking points will help to reinforce your relationship, help give them a bit of confidence to move forward, or at least just have them know where you're coming from, then you can actually reverse engineer knowing those stories to practice what stories you're actually going to tell in the senescence world. What stories of previous client relationships are you going to have? What communication things are you going to do? If you can foresee that this client may leave because they feel like they're not getting anywhere, even though you already previously talked about it and you can reverse engineer the conversation you have at the next resale, if you will, by talking about all those things, do it. Identify current client problems, orthopedic issues, emotional challenges they're struggling with, whatever it is. Come up with stories to talk about in your next sale to make sure that it all connects and they understand the position of what you're doing with them. Have them tell you and say things, but the more important thing for you of this is to hot dog the communication of that sale process. Identify what you need to talk about, master talking about it, create a table of contents for that education base close. So my pick of the week is reverse engineering client problems before they happen and getting good talking about it. Ultimately, it is teaching. And I think everyone here could 100% benefit from that. And we've talked about that a bunch. We've talked about it with students, trainers here. It's not just about another report. It's not about another education-based close. It really is how do you customize the story of that session so they understand what it means, what it means to continue with you. Bangers today, everybody. Banger of a conversation, Brandon. I love it. I Every, loved it. So everyone, listen. We're going to do this. Boom. 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 Everyone. Uh, Minds on Muscle Podcast. Glenn and I are doing this once every two weeks, talking about specific topics. You can find more of us under the Fitness Pro Mentors Podcast. We've got incredible interviews. And at the end of the day, this is your fitness MBA. We want to make sure that as a personal trainer, you have all the tools you need to two to three X your personal training business. Check us out. Have a great day. Glenn, talk to you real soon. Salutations, everybody.